Yeah, okay, third workshop uh, of the quality workshop series. And um, I just would like to go through um, the goal for today um, is that we discuss uh, the conductivity aspects of a quality scheme we have introduced during the last workshop in February. And uh, I will, in the beginning, give a short overview of this uh, um, quality scheme because some of you has not uh, or had not joined the last time. I hope that uh, uh, to those of you who had not the chance uh, to be with us uh, during the second workshop that you had the chance to read the minutes. Otherwise, I will share the link in the, in the chat or circulate it uh, afterwards. Um, in the beginning, I would like to um, um, to determine one person who's writing minutes or at least is making notes that we can pick up the discussion and contributions of everyone. Uh, I, um, I'm hosting this from, uh, from my home at the moment. Um, so I have just one screen. I cannot do everything side by side. Um, so is someone who can contribute the notes to, to me afterwards that we can write the minutes Okay, difficult at the moment. Um, so then, Ben, can you do this? For sure. Yeah. Okay. Then, uh, we just hop in. Okay, last time we um, we discussed or we introduced the scheme and discussed the scheme how one can um, rate the quality of feedback data. And um, it was clear that um, we need to have a, a scheme that considers um, different aspects. And those aspects identified have been uh, the uncertainty of uh, a heat flow value that can be quantified on the one hand side, then the rating of the methodological quality of uh, the determination of conductivity and temperature gradients. Uh, as a second part, and the third part that one need to assess somehow the perturbation effects. And our proposal was that uh, we generate ratings for each of these three aspects. Uh, and those ratings are included in a combined score, which gives on uh, in, one, uh, yeah, in one visualization an impression about uh, how those uh, aspects are rated for a specific location. So um, uh, here's an example just uh, which gives for the uncertainty a rating between one and four, for the methods a rating between one and four, and then some descriptive uh, uh, letters at the, at the end of the rating that, uh, that gives a uh, impression about whether perturbation effects like sedimentation and erosion and so on uh, uh, are in case or in, in presence at a specific location. So this general scheme has been approved and discussed last time and uh, it became clear during that discussion that we need to uh, um, go more in details regarding uh, conductivity and temperature ratings and just uh, switch through some of these slides from last time to give you an impression because there was a question how uh, oh, wait. I don't know do, do you see your own so oh, way how uh, how those information then is transmitted from child to parent level I hope everyone is now uh, familiar with the basic concept of the structure of the database that uh, uh, the the main uh, the main location information is stored in, in something what we need a parent level uh, of, of data and uh, specific determinations of heat flow in, from different authors or in different depths of a location is determined in uh, the child uh, value. And so uh, the child values inherit her poorest information to the parent level. 
Um, probably let's have a look in one of the three aspects, the mythological quality. Um, uh, we introduced so the basic idea and this method evaluation or the, the uh, qualification of the methods was that, um, that we have a look how, uh, how reliable is the conductivity diminution from the methodological point of view and uh, how reliable is the temperature gradient determination. And uh, this was just the first proposal that we said, okay, we've tried to evaluate it on, on, in two dimensions and uh, that, uh, that we create a kind of evaluation matrix out of it and um, um, can use this as a kind of rating in a quality scoring. So um, um, the, well, sorry, the basic idea was, was here approved, but it was clear that we need to consider more, um, more items or at least more information uh, to make uh, conductivity evaluation and the temperature gradient evaluation more reliable. So this was a general consent or the general agreement last time. And for now, uh, for today, we actually, we meet to, wait, I don't know whether you see this, this bar here. No, it's just for me. Okay, I need to put this somewhere. Um, for now, we just need to, um, we need to discuss about the important conductivity aspects here. Um, because apparently what we have suggested last time to have a combination of saturation uh, of samples, for example, and of the in situ conditions does not fully meet all the ideas and expectations of the attendance last time. Yeah. And um, so, we try to prepare this workshop, uh, Ben and me, and we discussed those issues and we want to, it became, there were two aspects we would like to, uh, to talk about in front. The first one is that apparently um, we need to discuss about how we can reflect and image the heterogeneity of, uh, of the heat flow interval. Um, this means the prerequisite or the basic idea of heat flow determination, of course, is that one has a homogeneous interval. This is how everything was defined or discussed, for example, in the, in the heat flow Bible from 1988. Um, but this apparently is not always the case, uh, that we have a pure homogeneous interval uh, or an ideal interval. Um, so I think uh, at a certain point, we need to discuss how one can define the kind of uh, homogeneity or inhomogeneity of an heat flow interval to report this. Um, and we think this is important as well for conductivity, uh, for conductivity on the one hand side, as well as for the temperature gradient on the other hand side. Um, uh, however, we haven't uh, prepared uh, an idea for that for now, um, but we have focused on the conductivity and we just would like to introduce our ideas uh, on the scheme, maybe as a, as a start to discuss items. Yeah. Um, our idea here for these dimensions, for the conductivity dimension was that uh, one can extend this dimension in an own matrix or matrix and um, that we need to discuss or to answer three questions. And those questions are mainly uh, uh, pointed out here on the left side. So the first questions one need to answer in an evaluation is clearly whether the depth interval is reported. Uh, if the heat flow depth interval is not reported, uh, we suggest that uh, uh, at least for a borehole or mine determination, uh, we should end the evaluation because um, we cannot further proceed um, when the interval in which heat flow was determined is not reported. The second question from our point of view is um, that we should uh, clarify how the interval for heat flow determination was uh, selected. So based, for example, on temperature gradients, based on, on the lithological composition, based on a stratigraphic interval. Okay. 
And uh, we think that uh, those uh, sources of uh, interval selection are of different quality and have a different impact on the further determination. Uh, so from my point of view, selecting an, uh, an interval to calculate heat flow in boreholes, for example, um, um, can be rated best if you use uh, temperature gradients of high resolution uh, because those gradients apparently reflect uh, best uh, the areas where you have uh, stable constant gradients because this is actually a prerequisite that you have homogeneous intervals with constant gradients, right? If you want to apply the Fourier equation or the Fourier uh, yeah, equation. And the third question we would like to put in front is um, whether the conductivity was determined specifically for this chosen interval or whether you have uh, transferred it from other intervals or other locations around. Uh, I think this is an important um, um, differentiation required. Uh, if one start with those basic questions, um, and here in this, uh, in this case, um, we put some values to it, right? Um, values like um, we start with a value from one and um, the answer to each of those questions probably reduces such a rating by, by values you can see here. Uh, that, um, because it's in different, whether you have an interval reported uh, and use temperature gradients for the selection and has conductivity determined in the specific interval compared to um, the intervals reported, but you use just the stratigraphic table and um, uh, conductivities from somewhere, you know. And this is what we want to what we want to cover here. That um, those different approaches to determine conductivity can be somehow uh, put into a rating. And um, the second step was our approach or proposal here for a more detailed evaluation of the conductivity would be then if we have answered those first steps um, and it's clear that um, a conductivity interval is given here, then we can care about um, what sources of um, of data do we have? And um, if, if you have the uh, structure of the heat flow, uh, um, of the heat flow database in mind, then we have different conductivity items. One item is uh, reporting about the saturation state. Another item is reporting about the uh, um, pressure and temperature conditions under uh, which conductivity is determined. So uh, whether this reflects ambient laboratory conditions or in situ pressure or temperature or a combined effect of both. Uh, and we have a, a source item um, that reports about the source of conductivity determinations. Uh, that could be core measurements, of course, uh, that could be log interpretation or measurements from cuttings or computations from mineral, uh, mineral assemblies or um, even core log integration. So that are different sources, and I think um, each of those uh, sources um, has different advantages and disadvantages and focus on a different scale, in a, for example, in a bowl or in a mine. So the resolution of information in each of those methods is, and the, the depth of integration and I think of validation, cross-validation uh, is uh, differs from source to source. Yeah, Ricardo, just uh, but unmute yourself, please. I don't, you are muted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a sec. Um, if I may ask a question, um, if that's okay at this point. Um, yeah, hi everyone. Um, I'm working with uh, marine in situ measurements, and um, I was just wondering. Um, so I can see how these measurements would be able to be graded with this kind of scheme, but often, for example, we choose the interval based on the instrument setup. So I was wondering 
you know, if you put the temperature gradient as a um, prerequisite, um, does that still mean, you know, if we, if we measure to our best solution, uh, best resolution in C2, would that still get a good grading? <laughs> you are totally right. Uh, and probably this is something I missed to, to mention at the beginning. Um, because this question, of course, was raised last time uh, by oh, Jeff. Sorry. No, it's no worries uh, by Jeff Report, and it, it is clear. okay for the moment. What we propose here is clearly for borehole and mine measurements, and we agreed last time that for marine measurements we need to develop a, uh, a separate scheme. Oh, okay. And um, I think we sh you should. This is actually something. Um, um, Jeffrey took in at least in my uh, in my mind Jeffrey took over the responsibility for so we will have a separate workshop on marine uh, uh, evaluation schemes because mm -hmm. other aspects are important here mm -hmm. um, and uh, I think this will be in somehow in May probably um, if we are not faster but that needs to be considered separately Ah, okay. So focus for, for this uh, conductivity aspect is clearly uh, the determination of walls and lines. Yeah. All right. Yeah, sorry. I um, didn't watch the video from last time yet, but thanks for clearing this up. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So um, to, to um, mix this up, a, a proposal could be that uh, one combined uh, those three questions uh, uh, with um, the information we get from the saturation state, the in situ conditions and the source methods to, to put those in, into a, uh, a matrix scheme like this one on the right as the first proposal uh, and uh, to come up with, with scorings that can be combined with each other in some way yeah? uh, to uh, yeah, to come to an evaluation of the methodological quality, uh, not to a quantification, but to an evaluation of the methods itself. And, um, Sven, excuse me, can I ask you something? When you look at uh, log interpretation, you're going to, uh, to check uh, uh, literature values. What, uh, am I right? No. Um, that directly means that one use geophysical logs and um, probably with oh log yeah 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 empirical uh, equations or with um, some physical equations um, to use for example density or gamma logs or something uh, and have indirect links to the conductivity. But uh, another question: when you don't have anything like that, you just have the 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 log interpretation, uh, visual log interpretation, only only uh, logging description. Uh, what what do you do? Are you going to? Uh, will you use uh, literature values from maybe from the uh, from the? I'm sorry, from, uh, from the bore log description or something. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. It's, it's six a.m. I'm still. Uh, 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 yeah, verbal oh. description. Yes, maybe some the 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 well something uh, some values that are uh, published in literature or in in the in the when you use the those values that you use in in um, shallow shallow resistivity uh, sorry sh uh, shallow geothermal. Uh, uh, and thermal response tests? Yes, yeah, thermal repos, response tests or in, in, the, in the VDI, uh, sorry, in the VDI um, uh, standard. Ah, um, okay. Um, when, when using literature values, then you need, of course, a descriptor to assign those literature values that could be lithology, if you have a, a bore log description, right? Um, so one approach could be using bore log descriptions, um, selecting lithologies, and then applying 
literature values from standards or from from somewhere to those lithologies. Yes, but you don't have that in your in your metrics. No, not yet, because this is just a proposal and it's okay. not, not complete in terms of I have considered everything. Uh, it's just to show that, for example, uh, the nearest to what you have described this described here would be probably mineral computation, that you have minerals or uh, mineral assemblies and that you apply literature values to those mineral values you have measured yeah. and uh, make a sign of uh, uh, applying mixing laws in the very end. Huh? Okay, okay, sorry. There could be another column um, where other approaches are, are mentioned here with a different rating, right? Yeah, lower rating, of course, but still still yeah. included in the matrix, yes. This was, um, um, yeah, this was just the, the discussion we, we had that uh, we had those five methods in, in mind and there could be other methods, of course, we, we need to discuss and could include here. Yeah. Yeah. So. Code log and code measurement. Code log and code measurement. Oh, this was very, very silent. I did not fully understand this. What's more, Labani? The difference between the core log and core measurement. Oh, um, yeah, so I, um, I apologize a bit because it's not, um, not that well prepared uh, this time because we really had been short on time. Um, the, the core measurements, of course, is that you use three core samples to, to measure thermal rock properties directly. Core log means that you, it, that you integrate data from core measurements and from log interpretation. So you have this upscaling effect and uh, somehow a cross uh, validation with two methods. Uh, and at least in our understanding, um, um, having just log interpretation can give you some, some values based on empirical equations. Uh, which is nice because you have the Bohol scale uh, from those uh, log interpretation, just giving core measurements. You have point information in most cases and integrating both can give you a much more reliable information, of course, for a scale of the heat flow interval. That means lab measurement along with the log, uh, uh, core uh, log. Lab so measurements is the core measurement. Along with the uh, code uh, log, means both combining both. Yeah, core log means combining both. Okay. Okay. okay thank you. Hey, I I have a short comment to the uh, one before Labani uh, about the the one determination of data from lithology and other values combining stuff like that um, that would not really fit with the uh, uh, with the other left part of the matrix because you you writing down measured either dry saturated ambient or in situ that means uh, in case of you have a data from lithology derived they wouldn't really measure it so in case you have to maybe add something like uh, on the left on the on the left column, um, because then you would have the uh, a num uh, some kind of item like uh, in not measured that means derived calculated uh, something like this. Yeah, you're totally right. <laughs> Because you, you when when you write now when you when you use the word measured then it uh, implies that you really have values uh, concerned about that, not just taking something out. Because all the data you mentioned in the other part, like core lock, is all measurement. This is all measurement. Even if you say it's a mineral composition, is some kind of measurement or not depends, but it's some kind of yeah derived derived value. So mineral computation would be a little bit, uh, uh, I would consider not really 100% measurement. No, you're right. Um, so uh, once more, I apologize. It was, uh, um, this presentation was really this time a quick, uh, quick uh, work yesterday. Um, this cannot mean measured here. So this is a saturated state or a dry state. 
let's say this is a okay. yeah. and uh, so you could consider this as saturated if you apply minerals and uh, mixing laws or as dry of course and the same applies for measurements for example for core measurements here yeah but this really this is just this is our proposal so we think that uh, the answer to those three questions here on the left side is important. Uh, it is important to consider. And um, in, this, in the same way, it is important to consider whether conductivity is, um, is determined with saturation under PT conditions and uh, with different methods. And this is just our proposal, how uh, one could get those things together. Yeah. Um, we, we, we don't, would, you know, this is just a base for discussion. So um, your ideas on that would be very welcome. Um, I have no clue whether the idea to start with the scoring value and then to subtract depending on, on those answers, some, some values, or to um, whether this is a good idea or the perfect idea, uh, or to have those product scoring here from from those single uh, score items this is just a suggestion so if someone has more brilliant ideas they really welcome in any case um, I, I i i just have a short clarification uh, so when you look at data then you start actually as you outline with a step one go through the different steps and reduce the value and then using this final value and going into the step two and check again what kind of source we have and then reducing further if necessary. Is this correct? Yeah, that could be the basic idea. Starting with one exactly and reducing the, the value uh, to the very end. Okay. That, because that would mean, for example, if we have an excellent uh, um, uh, preconditions. So we have the interval, we start with, with a heat flow interval based on temperature gradients, and we have determined conductivity in this interval. Then, for example, having a, a core log value derived with in situ pressure and temperature conditions uh, under saturated conditions would give you finally the, the best value of one. Yeah. yeah, okay. Because core log and saturation and situ uh, from our idea would be the best. But if you use the same approach, but uh, uh, for, a, for a different interval or a close by location and based on an interval defined by stratigraphy, it cannot be rated as one and more because so it would be reduced by probably 0.4. So the overall rating then would be reduced from, from actually one to 0.6. And okay, that would consider on the one hand side that the actual method itself applied is, is very good. But uh, the approach that it is based on a stratigraphic interval selection and it is determined somewhere, probably in a, in a bowl close by, and we just make the transfer from the one location to the other, that this has impact. Uh, we cannot quantify this impact here, but uh, we can reflect that uh, it is not uh, selected in, a, in, in an ideal or optimal way. So I think, yeah, okay. we, of course, one can discuss whether the, uh, or generally one, one can discuss the whole approach, but if we, if the majority thinks this could be a way to treat this, we can easily discuss whether those values are uh, chosen wisely or not. Uh, probably they are, could be adjusted uh, for good reason. Um, Massimo. Oh, hi, Sam. Sorry, I missed part of your introduction. So, would you would you uh, um, clarify? Uh, me, uh, what is the difference between lithology and stati stratigraphy? What do you mean exactly? You mean that you look at the type of rocks uh, when, you when you speak about lithology and 
the age, for example, just the age of the of chronological age of the, the rock when you, you speak about stratigraphy or whatever? Um, in my idea, it, it would be the difference that um, I, yeah, lithology means that you uh, select an interval because you have a, for example, a sandstone interval and you select it specifically because you have more or less homogeneous sandstones here. Um, and the second one would be that you use an interval according to um, a stratigraphic section. Yeah. So rock type and then in this case, chrono by stratigraphy. Yeah. Okay, thanks. The, probably, you know, the, the, I think it is important to differentiate where those interval was selected from. Um, but at the same time, I think uh, um, at the moment, we do not have those information ready. Um, because, you know, saturation, con uh, PT source and so on, that is covered by the structure of the database so far. But um, the reason why the interval was selected so far was not uh, included until now. Ben? No. Yeah, just maybe one, one or two comments because I th or why we discussed these questions here at this point, because we thought about, we discussed also last time uh, how many Mm -hmm. or how to consider the amount of measurements done in an interval. So how good is uh, thermal conductivity determined for an interval? So the question of course is, what is it for an interval? What is it, how is it characterized? And this is why we end up with these uh, questions here. So at least we need to know how the interval was defined in which depth interval, but of course, to judge on uh, the quality of the thermal conductivity determination for the interval, which should be representative for the interval. We need to clarify, uh, is it homogeneous or not? Because it, if it would be so, so actually we, not, we should need some info or should have some information about the heterogeneity in this interval. But this is hard to, uh, uh, to, to estimate based on the published data so far. So if you want to, to uh, have an idea on the quality, it, we, we end up with this idea. So if there is a, uh, so I think we uh, could discuss the ratings as well, because if it is selected by temperature gradient, it implies that it, is, so it was selected because it has a, a, a constant temp temperature gradient in this interval. So this is what is standing here. And if it's selected by lithology, then it's just because it's a, a limestone interval, perhaps. Um, yeah, but so uh, if it is uh, uh, really composed of only one type of rock and is very homogeneous limestone interval, uh, then it would be okay as well. So assuming that we do not have a high resolution continuous temperature lock. So this is uh, why we come here into, uh, into this. And I just uh, want to mention that, of course, that's uh, the question how to rate thermal conductivity and the values we have there and how many measurements perhaps we do have and stuff like this we discussed last time depends on how the interval is uh, defined or what kind of interval it is and how good is our information about this interval. So maybe just some comments to think over uh, what might be of relevance uh, and maybe, um, yeah, we, we missed also some aspects which should be included perhaps. Are there other comments so far? Discussion contributions, ideas, missing items? 
Um, yeah, I, I just, uh, while discussing the structure and the complexity um, of the grading, um, what jumped to my head was um, that it would be maybe also sensible to keep in mind um, the complexity of the grading and what's, what's feasible. Because if we go through all those studies um, and if the grading or evaluation scheme is too complex, um, like, yeah, in, in order to have a good trade-off between which information do we need to grade and how much in-depth or detail do we actually go? Because I, as I said, I just stepped into this discussion. I don't know what has been done here before, but um, I was, yeah, I was a bit worried if it gets too complex, then the workload might get too much. But that's just a thought I had, yeah. <sighs> If that makes sense. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. Getting a balance between um, an approach easy to apply, but also considering relevant information is um, exactly the challenge. And uh, Sven, one comment. Of course, we should use the data we want to have in the database we agreed already. Mm -hmm. And this is the base for our evaluation. So we do not need, we should not need to uh, define too much new as database entries. We should use what we have now in there, except we see that we missed really a very important and maybe simply to address point then of course we should add it because uh, that's mm -hmm. science uh, i think we are not perfect with our first uh, database entries so we can change and alter this but i think uh, this point you're right we should uh, use the entries we have and use it in the best way good morning Imo. Good morning, Sven and all. Sorry to be late. Uh, just a comment on this thermal conductivity interval. So uh, we who work mostly with crystalline rocks and the, we measure holes of opportunity that are not designed by us, they're by mining companies or, or whatever. And we get a possibility to, to log the borehole and we get access to the uh, core boxes. The, the way to select the samples is typically a systematic one. You take a sample every five meters or so, or, or whatever the interval allowed, and, and then this defines the, the sampling. So in, in this step one uh, uh, flowchart, uh, the interval selected by could, could also be a kind of systematic depth interval sampling. Because this is, this is mo the most common way uh, to do that. So often, you, you uh, take the samples even before you uh, lock the borehole. Depends on the case, of course. And then uh, judging the, the quality of uh, well, the, uh, the, the interval uh, thermal conductivity, uh, uh, simply uh, standard deviation of the values measured and the number of values would be uh, useful information. For instance, the, uh, measuring um, uh, uh, crystalline rocks, like any uh, granitic rock, for instance, it's quite common that uh, there's a variation of about plus minus half watts per meter per Kelvin, uh, even in a homogeneous environment, in small size divided bar samples, which are what, but one centimeter uh, uh, high. Or, or the length of the, of the core. So that's, that's uh, just a comment at this point. Mm. This um, touches um, a bit the discussion about um, how one can combine the question of number of, of determinations of conductivity or samples, for example, and the length and heterogeneity of the interval. Um, so I think we have raised exactly this point last time and the time before as well. So at, at a certain point, we need to address 
exactly this question, how not only for conductivity, but more importantly, also for the temperature gradient, uh, how the number of observations uh, can be related to the length of the interval and the heterogeneity of the interval. Um, because obviously, um, um, if you have, yeah, depending on the length and heterogeneity, um, the number of, uh, of de conductivity determinations is, is appropriate or even not, right? So, um, uh, let me, I think that's what uh, we talked about earlier is, uh, because you have a gradient and lithology, if we keep the stratigraphy out, so if you, you can have both sit situation about this homogeneous heterogeneous issue, even if I have a homogeneous section, I still have, can have different gradients or in terms of sampling and measurements, I can get st still different data. We just learned that also again. Opposite, maybe I get in the data, I see a lithology with, or a, a section with different lithologies, but the temperature gradient is not really varying in a way that you say the lithology has an impact on my temperature gradient. So this is, I think what we, we have done earlier. So. How to, how to separate these cases when you're looking into data where you have different lithology, but the temperature gradient is pretty much not changing. How you define the boundaries. Also the same with the samples when you take real cores for the lab measurements. That's on that topic. It's for me, yes. Just just one one question, Helmut, because to get it right, because in my understanding, if we have uh, an interval and we have a temperature gradient, a constant temperature gradient in there, or uh, other, if we have a homogeneous section and we see yeah, a oh, change, oh, oh. Is, is, we see a, a change in the temperature gradient then something must change in the properties or we have an, another influence like paleoclimatic effects or stuff like this. So that's, that's yes. right, yeah. Um, okay, that, that might be a, a possibility. Um, okay, yeah, I, yeah, I think it over, yeah. Yeah, yeah the, the, the question is how you gonna if you, for example, look at data and you see things like this, how are you gonna, I think this was also the question of Ilmo, uh, how you, with this samples, how are you gonna judge it, how you put this into the scheme? Because you have to make a decision whether you uh, ask for the interval selected by gradient or by lithology. So at this point, you have to make a decision And I remember from our first uh, meeting that uh, people were asking to, uh, this is a little bit opposite what Ricarda said, that keeping these details available, uh, which are in the data, uh, rather not to uh, rather not to smooth them out, like uh, to, to really uh, keep these differences somehow, maybe if somebody's interested in, as you said, Ben, about changes in paleo climate or other things like this. So keeping these difference, whatever uh, maybe usefulness is later uh, uh, done with it. I don't know. That's my, my top, my part. Although the general, the, the uh, variety of information is kept into the database. So we do not lose this, but um, um, the question is to what degree, of course, we, we consider this in this rough uh, quality approximation, right? Because 
apparently we need to have a, a scheme which is rough enough to, to to be applicable to as many data as possible on the one hand side, but gives us also a very um, added information and added value. Um, and it's on the same way, um, yeah, easy to apply, right? So that's the kind of balancing, yeah. Uh, Emil. If, if you want to evaluate which is better, selecting the thermal conductivity samples by temperature gradient or by lithology, I would always recommend the lithology or a systematic depth interval. <laughs> because the temperature log, as discussed, can be uh, disturbed by flow in the hole, for instance. But that smears out the small uh, gradient variations. And uh, um, we even, even did once a kind of an experiment that can we uh, find out the thermal conductivity in a borehole by measuring very carefully the temperature gradients. In some cases, this is uh, the inverse problem is possible and we can, we can do that. But it's, it's very sensitive uh, to any sorts of uh, uh, drilling time disturbances or flow in the hole somewhere. Paleoclimatic disturbances are much more longer wavelength than a typical heat flow interval of, say, 50 meters or, or 100 meters. So that they, they don't often make a, uh, too much of a difference unless you are at a very shallow depth. But, but if, if you want to say which is better, it would be the lithology based, I would say. Okay. This, this, this will satisfy more the pit of physicists, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> ben? Just uh, another idea. Yes, I, I understand this point, but I'm just thinking about that we are now talking on thermal conductivity and we will talk later on temperature. And I'm just wondering if we... Uh, agree on that for, for continental heat flow determination based on this interval method, we should use an interval which is uh, um, chosen a constant temperature gradient under steady state conditions, let's say. So there must be some uh, rating of the temperature log. And <laughs> this is uh, part of the discussion we had uh, yesterday um, that, of course, uh, this heterogeneity and this kind of interval determines somehow how we could judge on the thermal conductivity data used in this interval. So if we assume that temperature or this interval was determined in a uh, yeah, well cross-checked uh, interval where we have seen, okay, we have... Uh, uh, no, no uh, advective flow in this uh, borehole and so on and so on, then we can say, okay, if we have a homogeneous temperature gradient in this interval, this is a good information and is approved. But <clears throat> so, yeah, I, I, yeah I'm, I'm just wondering if it, it's uh, perhaps making sense uh, to discuss this also in this temperature issue again to to come then back again to this topic of thermal conductivity. Okay. Um, Jeff, before uh, I would ask you, uh, are there comments on this question uh, from Ben or remarks on that? Uh, one short thing, if you talk about uh, Ben, if you talk about then the quality of temperature gradient of temperature measurement for determine the gradient, then you have the same topic in the lithology. Although it's also how good is your lithology determined? Is this really in meter scale or a decimeter scale, or uh, is this just in more general? How good is the description? Same same problem we have on that side. So this yeah, is basically. Uh, perhaps it's easier to address if you have uh, knowledge on uh, uh, you know, 
if it's uh, a measurement every meter or if you're continuous logging and so on and uh, maybe you have, do not have the information if there was uh, every five meters a description made from the mythology or whatever that might make you not available. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Okay, Jeff Nunn. Um, yeah, so I was wondering if for the interval selected um, portion that maybe the plus or minus zero um, bucket would be when two out, two out of the three methods consistently define the intervals. In other words, you have a, the lithology is similar, but you also have the same temperature gradient. Um, and that yeah. you would then have a, a minus one if it's just one of the three. Although I do agree that I think the stratigraphy should be a larger penalty than either temperature gradient or lithology. Um, the other comments I have is I, I went back and looked at what the criteria for the world stress map measurements is and a lot of theirs is based on how many measurements you have within the interval used. Um, so that, that may be another thing to consider. And then the final comment I have goes back to Ricardo's comment a while back in terms of trying to keep it tractable or simple is, I mean, I think deciding, to, you know, categorizing high and low quality is probably gonna be pretty easy. It's gonna be differentiating all the stuff in the middle between the two middle categories. And so a lot of our methodology should probably be focused on, you know, what's sort of a, good quality value from a fair quality value. Okay, this raises a question for me that whether we should um, separate between temperature gradients and lithology as at all um, when talking about how an interval was selected. So, because uh, actually, uh, I've I've heard Ilmo who prefers uh, prefers uh, lithology over temperature gradient for reasons of that the temperature gradient could be influenced or perturbed by effects. Um, my idea of putting the temperature gradient in front was born out of the experience with <laughs> with high quality temperature logs uh, measured years after uh, after the drilling uh, in, in in case holes. So. Um, in, in an area where we have no borehole flow. So that is the background from my idea, putting the, the gradients in front. But um, probably there's an, um, a good reason to, to prefer lithology over gradients or to put both on the same step and just separate them from stratigraphy as, as one category. I don't know, um, yeah. Uh, Imo, maybe you want to comment on that. Uh, two comments. First, about these very stable temperature gradients. Uh, they can be due to uh, uh, homogeneous lithology, but they can also be due to uh, this sort of a uh, quite a dramatic flow. Even a few milliliters per second of flow in a, in a slim drill hole can uh, generate an offset in the temperature, which may be something like a few tenths of a degree, but the gradient is relatively representative, but it's much smoothed uh, from the undisturbed case. That's one point I, I want to make. The second one is that I bring you to your attention the, the point that uh, uh, working in areas like uh, Finland, Sweden, uh, parts of uh, uh, um, any shield areas where uh, and, and Canada, where uh, diamond drilling is common. These holes are typically inclined to maximize the penetrated stratigraphy because the metamorphic rocks show uh, inclined layers. You drill perpendicular to that. And it, it's common that uh, a long one kilometer deep hole deviates uh, because of technical reasons in the deeper parts. And when calculating the temperature gradient, we want to have the vertical one. Of course, we do the geometrical correction for that. But then we come to the thermal conductivity. 
we take typically thermal conductivities of the core samples and measure that like with a divided bar. The, the procedure provides a component of the thermal conductivity in the direction of the drill hole. This is not the vertical. <laughs> and to correct for, the, uh, for this effect, you would need to know the an possible anisotropy, especially in, in metasedimentary. So I admit I, I've published a lot of data this way without paying attention to the, to the anisotropy. And, and uh, the factors of anisotropy can, can be anything from one uh, to about two, depending on the, on the, on the case. So it's, uh, it's a pretty complicated field. So at least the sort of uh, indications of, uh, uh, of uh, like uh, when, when uh, sending data through the database, there, there could be a box if I could check that uh, uh, corrected for anisotropy, no, uh, corrected for this or that, effect, yes or no. So that uh, borehole originally inclined, yes or no. Corrected uh, for the uh, deviation geometry, yes or no. That, that would give an idea for, for, a, uh, uh, for anyone using the data so that what might be the complications here. Um, uh Short, short comment, Ilmo. Uh, the same thing happens uh, when you're drilling vertical and you have inclined strata, the same same issue happens. So uh, so in this case, you also have to do uh, some kind of uh, uh, layer, layer uh, inclination, how much is the direction of yeah. the layering so, so, dipping, you, you dipping there, down. There's a refraction of heat. Yeah, of for example... Strata. Yeah. yeah, for example, if we remember in Germany, our KTB drilling hole was almost vertical, uh, uh, nice, uh, nice vertical um, foliation. So um, that's the same problem. Mm, yes. I, um, that are very specific questions for the moment. Um, and I have noted this question whether we should include um, probably new items and um, that this is not lost as, as idea and information. Um, I, would, um, I would like to bring the discussion probably a, a bit more to a fundamental point. Um, whether the basic idea uh, of how to evaluate the quality, uh, which is probably, yeah, let's focus on the right side, right? To, to consider saturation, to consider the sources of determinations and the, uh, the in situ pressure temperature conditions, whether this feels be okay for you, whether you agree that this should be considered here. Um, in a, in a general way, not about the numbers. We can discuss the numbers, but whether the idea to combine those three dimensions, saturation, PT, and the source of information uh, as a backbone to evaluate the method quality. Uh, um, and I would like to have your opinion on that, uh, whether, you, uh, whether you agree on that, or if you would like to suggest some modifications here. And uh, just to understand correctly, uh, what's the meaning of core log? Yeah, that means a combination of core measurements with log integration. Yeah. Okay, thank you. And uh, we had this earlier, of course, those categories on the source are not complete now. Um, there was the questions for using uh, bore log descriptions, for example, and applying literature values. Uh, and I think we could also imagine other categories under the source, uh, but it's just to the general idea of that we rate the, the, the uh, inherent methods used to determine conductivity uh, against each others. And here we have rated it uh, in terms of 
um, let's say, degree of integration and degree of cross-validation. Uh, so um, in this term with core log integration, we have two different methods to determine conductivity and we have the upscaling to a profile, uh, which really is, uh, from my point of view, rated higher than using cutting measurements or some computations based on, on XRD mineral computations or so, right? But I think mm -hmm. first is the question whether those dimensions are sufficient, uh, saturation, PT, and source, and then whether we can discuss whether the 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 ordering of these sources is is makes sense or not uh, should be changed. Uh, but sorry, Anya, I. <laughs> Sorry, hi. Um, I, I like these categories. Um, it's what we tend to do in our lab here. Um, I was just wondering if there's any, um, uh, I guess, backing to maybe reporting how the conductivity is measured, like what type of, whether it's a divided bar or a laser scanner, is there much difference in those quality um, and variations in the data you're getting? Is that worth like, is there big enough difference to note the, the measurement method? That's a good point. <laughs> and we have had to discuss this as well. Um, yeah, that's not easy um, because um, this question obviously depends on, on the, the geological setting and the rocks you're measuring, right? And uh, then touches questions uh, an is of an isotropy Ilmo has raised, for example. Um, and then we come from, we refine and we get into details and more details. So, um, yeah, keeping in mind to, uh, to balance out uh, an easy to apply approach with the given information, uh, our first approach was, okay, we do not consider the specific type of, of, of measurement device for the core or cutting measurements. Um, but probably um, we can discuss this because the majority thinks it would be valuable to include it. I don't know, I don't know what's the right way. Um, my first impression was if we make, if we open up this dimension, um, then we lose the track to have an easy to apply approach. Um. Yeah, um, that, uh, that's what I think we, we talked about this already, because if you come and I think some of, of the members here might come from the petrophysics side, you measure a lot, you measure a lot of things, a lot more than in any well or in any commercial drilling, setting, whatever. Uh, you measure an anisotropy, you measure uh, higher sampling rates, you have a good uh, understanding of the lithology and stuff like this, maybe structure, everything. So, and I think this is what Sven is talking about. Can, should, do we really have to put this all into the scheme? And I'm, I'm not sure if this is really necessary. Yeah. Because as I said, the petrophysicist, you can do a lot of things there and you are doing a lot of things there <laughs> and you produce a lot of uh, very valuable data. But is this in terms of uh, this approach, what Sven said, really necessary or in, in especially on this where you have a lot of data, do we scale it down and say, okay, we are focusing on what is really important for us or for the scheme. It's on my side. Ben, you have raised your hand. Yes. Uh, um, yeah. So my impression is uh, going, I think, more or less in, in the same direction. I think it is of interest what kind of measurement has been applied and how was the sample even prepared and, and, and over which uh, you know, it arises also the question for uh, saturation we have all, already uh, in this scheme. Um, but I think uh, that uh, the 
the most important uh, uh, so question is uh, how we, we have so many possible uncertainties in the evaluation of heat flow. Uh, and we think uh, we, we should maybe uh, uh, think of writing all these comments down that we provide the scheme as an idea how to how we see the data and the most points and if you go then and select your data this is the, the basic idea later on that you have a tool which helps you to select data you you maybe look for higher quality maybe and then of course uh, uh, you are as a user of the database still in charge for cross-checking the data itself again so we cannot do this in this global approach and i think it's it's very helpful if we write everything down what we what now arises in questions and to discuss this and i think we discussed this or, or, um, in the last meetings as well that it might be a, a good idea to end up with a new um, yeah how how to do it best and and what we need and this is what we are discussing more or less so how to if we if we need to decide on, on what is the a better method methodology or better idea something like this and this i think is very uh, would be a very good contribution for the community um, to support them with information like this Uh, um, I, I think it would be perhaps some useful information to 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 uh, check out what was the method used for the thermal conductivity measurement in a simple classification, but not use that for grading of the data quality. Uh, there's a, there's a very nice paper by by uh, Popov and co-workers com, uh, comparing the optical uh, scanning method. Uh, divided bar and, and uh, uh, half space line source methods, which are common, commonly used. And, and, and what, what they showed in the paper was that uh, careful laboratory uh, um, procedures and, and uh, uh, careful work provides quite comparable and accurate results from each of these methods. So it's a question of uh, how you use the method. The method as such is not a, a sign of good or bad quality. If, if we do that, we will have a lot of enemies very soon. <laughs> because if you say that divided bar is the, the king of all these measurements, yes, and like uh, that, yeah. others maybe it's something less, so, so uh, you will have people who will not understand this classification at all, and, and they are perfectly right. So the quality of work is a different thing than the, the, the applicability of a method. The information of the method would be important, and that should be included if possible. Yeah, totally agree. <laughs> so, I, I did not get the last, last sentence. Uh, would you prefer to include the information on the methods? Yes, yeah. Sven, for sure, we have this information in the database, yeah. but we will not use it for quality scheme ranking. Yeah. Then I and this, this I totally agree because we do not want to open this discussion and to to yeah. have some grave in the community. Yeah. Maybe the other question is how to judge on the right methodology or the right lab device and so on. Uh, yeah, it depends on many many different aspects. So I totally agree on this idea. Okay, then. <clears throat> Then probably let's just focus on the sources. Um, do does anyone of you has uh, additional uh, sources for conductivity determination in mind? As the first question, and second, um, do you all agree, or do you agree with the basic idea that we rate more integrative and more cross-validated methods like Colloc uh, over? Um, smaller scale, um, uh, not, not that integrative methods like computations from bore logs and literature values. So are there comments on that or in silence? Yeah. 
do you agree with that? Um, the first thing, first question is what we heard in the earlier this uh, session is uh, the one where you actually determine uh, the values based on like third party data. Like if you have lithology or the stratigraphy and then use some literature value, you are not actually, this is not in this kind of five categories. So it's some kind of, um, I wouldn't say it's a determination. That's, that's what I said earlier also. It's not a measurement anymore. Whether you want to include it or not, it's uh, or, 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 or others or something like this uh, up to, this is something to consider or not, whether you want to do this or not. Um, the second one is about the integrative things. I think it's also uh, about the quality. Mineral computation is, I think, a little bit different from, although not talking about the methodology itself, but uh, different from the uh, core log real measurement or core log integration of real measurements. So it's also uh, not only from the integrative part, it's also a quality issue in this case. And cutting is also different from uh, full core measurements. Yeah, that is. So uh, we, we made quite good experience with mineral computations. So in, in crystalline rocks with no anisotropy and uh, a good mineral covering, you can meet measured values quite well. Uh, there are other conditions with large anisotropy and large porosity also where we probably do not meet uh, the conditions. But um, okay, what I get is that we add uh, a column like lithology, stratigraphy, plus literature and mixing models, right? Yeah, maybe something like this, yeah. Or any uh, anything else, which is maybe like more determination rather than... Yeah, this is determination, not measurement. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's or, or a calculate, yeah. Yeah. Something like this. So just conductivity sources, right? Yeah. Independent. Yeah. Okay. So sorry, as Ven. Yes. Hi, Ignacio. I was wondering why a log interpretation is rating rating better than cutting measurement because cutting measurement is a measurement. This is a real measurement, and and log determination log interpretation is like more has more. Uh, uncertainty, no? Yeah. Uh, you find my little provocation. <laughs> it, this is just a matter of debate. It was uh, our first proposal to put those numbers uh, assigned to each of those categories. So uh, yeah, uh, we can uh, adjust them easily. Yeah. And, and I have an, uh, another, <laughs> an, another more, I don't know, more deep uh, concern. Keeping all this in mind, so the idea here is that, uh, in general, that having the rating like the very good uh, heat flow determination, because we need this reference, you no know, points that we know that the, the, the determination of heat flow is very, very good, and we can trust this. And maybe the other ones, writing in a, in a medium and low quality. Whether it's because of uh, the incertitude in, in conductivity, because incertitude in, in other parameters, or because external uh, effects affected the, the, the measurement. Only, only this. So things are getting really complicated now <laughs> with all this. Uh, the, the, I don't know. Uh, at, at the end, in the end, we have to come with this, no, a good, medium or bad measurement, no. Uh, it, it's not, it's, it, uh, I'm not proposing uh, any change. Eh? I'm, I'm see after the, the, the discussion about the, the device, um, uh, the, the, the need to, to specify the device for measuring conductivity and everything. So, do you think we can simplify this and give like more space for commentaries and 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 each um, group 
or each data has like a commentary and say, explain there what, which are the incertitudes in the measurement. I don't know. Sorry if, if it's too philosophical. No, no, no. I, I understand your comment on a more fundamental way. Um, not that much focus on the on the quality, but uh, probably on the on the way how the database is working. Um, do I get this point correctly? That you think that um, those conductivity aspects should be uh, have the room to be commented in the database itself. You know, for example, the the, the devices or the methods. Um, um, are already covered in the database and there are common fields generally available um, to, to give space to comment on those aspects. But do you have the feeling that we need to extend this? No, no, no so, sorry, maybe, I don't know what I say that. <laughs> the point is that after the, the meeting today, I was silent because I, I, I realized how many incertitudes as Ben say, said, we have a lot of incertitude in, in, in this determination, heat flow determination. And uh, it's really complicated to like, to, to take all this in consideration and reflect this in a, in a parameter or in a name or in a, in a code. And, um, and I, so also someone, I don't know if was, I don't know who was, who said that maybe we can simplify all this, even keeping it in, 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 in uh, internally for us, no? to have this matrix for reaching our, our and, uh, and come uh, finally for the public or for, for publication like this three or, or four state, state no? high quality, low quality, medium quality and low quality. And keeping this like, Ex metadata, no, for a, for I don't know, <laughs> is that? Uh, sorry, uh, I think I, I'm becoming too philosophical again. Uh, I'm confused uh, to how to, because I'm sure even we are, we are like um, incertitude that we are not considering even here, that we are forgetting for for other experience. Uh, also, uh, I don't know, um, and maybe we have also to to try to to come with a very small tutorial about all these uh, incertitudes, uh, anisotropy, uh, groundwater effect, and very simple theoretical for for all us to to share our experience. Even if it's only a few tutorial of five, ten to ten pages with the basics, anomalies, uh, incertitudes, measurements, and things like that, to have a common reference. Uh, because I'm really, uh, I'm start to be a bit lost with all these. Uh, sorry, <laughs> that's all. Nasi, uh, you're very welcome um, because. Um... We are pretty much in the details now, and I think uh, you are totally right that uh, this needs to be written down clearly and uh, concise and precise, and uh, we need to have guidelines for that as well. Um, so, um, really, sorry, really, this thing of of anisotropy and and uh, that Helmut and Inmo talk about this kill me. Because it's true that I I, I, I see it's a, a very important effect I, I, I never considered previously. So um, that's why I'm a bit confused. Okay. Um, because there are many raised hands, uh, Massimo and then Lavani. Okay, that's fine. So I, I was focusing about step two. Uh, so I, I know that there are many uh, heat flow data that uh, are based on uh, 
thermal conductivity estimated, just estimated from lithology. Uh, okay, um, I think it's different from, uh, there is a fundamental difference between estimation from or computation from, from mineral composition or uh, just simply estimation uh, by means of lithology. Uh, so I think that the, the quality of estimation made by mineral composition is much better than uh, the simple estimation uh, from lithology. Because for example, you may have uh, a, a core, you may uh, make a cross section, you may um, uh, analyze this cross section on a microscope and you estimate the mineral composition with um, uh, with a certain precision, and uh, then you apply then you apply mixing models, so you have a, a very good estimation of the thermal conductivity. Otherwise, if you simply estimate uh, the conductivity from lithology, you have a very rough estimation. So uh, I think that it, it could be added a sixth column in, in yes. step two differentiating between mineral computation and uh, simply estimation by lithology. Yeah, yeah, that's good. <clears throat> okay. Gafas, thanks, Massimo. Lavani? I have two things to discuss. One is you have written log interpret is before cutting and mineral computation. So this is, I think, indirect method. Others are direct method of measurement, but this is indirect method. Yes. So it should, it should go after the measurement, like cutting means cutting from the samples only, cutting measurement, cutting things in the laboratory. And second thing is that when we are telling dry and saturated, so in case of log interpret, how it is possible in dry as well as saturated log interpret? Others, I can understand it is possible in both saturated and as well as dry. What <laughs> This was difficult to understand for me, but um, as, as far as I understood, it, your question was, how is it possible to have a dry conditions for log interpretation, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, actually, this depends, I think, if you have log interpretation, um, then there are several approaches you can use. Yeah? Um, this could be the application of um, empirical uh, equations. Um, yeah. Could be also the application of some uh, mineral assembly inverse approach. And um, in, in, in both, uh, um, if you apply, for example, empirical equations, of course, there are equations that had been determined uh, under dry conditions. Uh, uh, it is not that common, but um, I know that there are such equations where uh, researchers had uh, determined conductivity in the lab, uh, compressional wave velocity, for example, uh, and they uh, determined both on the uh, dry conditions and then make some empirical equations between both. And that's, that is <laughs> an example you can apply. Uh, so, so there is a wide range of, of interpretation methods or let's say of uh, equations you can apply to uh, any kind of interpreted log suite. Um, um, so that not, not only theoretically you can come up with it right, but uh, usually you would consider, of course, that uh, you have more or less uh, a kind of fluid saturated conditions in the borehole or in, in the log environment, right? Okay. So. okay, thank you. Uh, two hands, um, Ilmo. Uh, I would. I would evaluate the direct measurements of any kind better than estimations based on logs or mineral composition estimations. Because the direct measurement is finally 
a number which is obtained directly from the rock. If it is a core sample, great. If it is cuttings, it's okay. But uh, uh, anyway, the, the, the estimations from lithology, for instance, can be very misleading. So even in the classical compilations of thermal conductive values, thermal conductivities of different rock types by uh, Cermak and Henel and Rybach, uh, they clearly indicated that the, the rock name, the lithological name, does not guarantee almost anything about the conductivity. As they say, there are granites and granites. And, and <laughs> simply a granite can be anything from uh, less than two to over four. And that covers about 80% of all the rock conductivities. So the, the measurement is always better than estimation. But then there, are, there can be bad measurements too, and there can be very good uh, uh, estimations from logs and, and indirect uh, proxies. Uh, can, can I just jump in for a short comment? Um, Logging is also a measurement, even if it's an indirect measurement. Um, it is definitely, okay, this is different from this where I have lithology based or uh, lithology from uh, estimation of heat flow from lithology based, but uh, logging is still, uh, even if it's not a direct measurement, but it's still a measurement indirectly under the in situ conditions. And now you coming to this topic. So do we would like to challenge the question, what is better locking in, in situ well or laboratory measurements on cuttings? I don't want to go into that topic. Just, just a quick comment. I think that the, the wells where we have uh, appropriate locks available are not really common. Okay. So most of the thermal conductivity data is uh, either uh, measurements of the core or measurements of the cuttings somehow, or you're using indirect methods like a mineral a composition from cuttings, and then you use models. But Imo, what is your experience? You know, if you measure cuttings, you need to apply some indirect approach or some mixing models as well to, to upscale this to a core. Yeah, then, then, of course, uh, the, the in-situ porosity information is critical. And if, if I would have uh, image logs uh, telling anything about the uh, uh, stratigraphy, the, the layering in, a, in a sedimentary environment and, and uh, 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 or the foliation in a metamorphic environment. So it, it depends on, on what kind of a mixture model you use when calculating for mineral composition. Yeah. Because all you know, if you use an arithmetic mean, harmonic mean, geometric mean, or whatever. So there's a, there's a huge variation between those then. Well, excuse me, I, will, I would like to add something to what Ilmo said. You, Ilmo considered there are two kinds of measurements, the core measurements and the estimation. But uh, I think you should have another, a third option that uh, if you measure only um, rock samples from outcrops that you know that uh, uh, are uh, crossed by the borehole. Sorry. I think it's... Uh, Another another option for for uh, conductivity measurement. Uh, true. Yes. Yeah, this touches a bit um, the third questions we had here, um, because uh, this is exactly what we are asking here for whether the, the conductivity is determined directly for the interval of interest uh, or it is determined somewhere else. And this includes that it is determined on samples, for example, from, uh, from outcrops. Um, that, but that, that would include stratigraphy. The stratigraphy would include that. Because you are, that's what she said. You are using the, the same 
the, a, a sample from the same layer or the same outcropping material, and this is stratigraphy. Yeah, that's considered in both dimensions. But no. stratigraphy yeah. does not guarantee compositional homogeneity. No. <laughs> <You> know, <it's> <laughs> that, <laughs> that's why it's 0 0.2 minus. This, this sort of a heat flow determinations were made already in the times of Lord Kelvin. So people had measured temperatures about early 1800s already in boreholes. And, and uh, then they uh, measured thermal conductivity in lab from uh, rock samples to, to, to represent the borehole. And that's the way they obtained the first estimations or determinations of heat flow. But it was all the way until 1939 to this Benfield paper that the heat flow was determined directly from uh, the temperature and the thermal conductivity from the same borehole. And this is, this is the, uh, I think the important quality criterion is that uh, uh, if the data comes from the same borehole, yeah. one single borehole, it is much better than mixing data from somewhere else. Yep, that is what, what we learned. No, that's what we learned that the next uh, in the step two, the culling number six is a determination where you determine the heat flow based on different data from different sources and different locations. Yeah. And that is that is also would be a lower, not the six column only, it would be also from my point of view, a lower number. Yeah, maybe... Uh... A more methodological question now. Um, how do we achieve an agreement about the scoring values we use? Um, what could be a good procedure to, to test those scoring values to its core, whether this is um, consistent to, uh, well, to, to the overall scheme or not? Because, you know, this is an this was it's a, it's a quick development, yeah? uh, just to um, um, yeah, to put some numbers with, with my or our bands and my personal feeling how this should be rated. But um, um, I wonder how we could have a, a collaborative procedure to um, to come to to a conclusion here. Uh, are there any ideas on that? Comments on that? How we could proceed here? Oh, you are totally satisfied with those values, then probably it was a first guess, a good first guess, but um, I just wanted to mention it's not uh, fixed and it's in, yeah, here from the beginning. This is a fundament to discuss on it. So, so when uh, these numbers are just directly from somebody's hat. Yeah, here. They just figured <laughs> out what they, <laughs> that there just could be something. This is as although I, they have two digits already, so it uh, seems very accurate work. Yeah, yeah this is actually you know, <laughs> and and the user in front of the screen. Uh. Um, a, a short comment on that: if if we would like to have a more quantitative scaling based, then you need to go really to a case study where you have all the data. But I, I would say we don't have that. So where you really can uh, get the core log, get the core measurements and stuff like this, and then mm -hmm. start to really correlate this and really make a, a value and say, okay, this is uh, this source would have lower, have need to be lower than this value in order to, to make a judgment on that. So I don't think we get that. It would be possible if you do all this thing on one well. If somebody's interested to do things on this on one well, it's fine. But I don't think somebody will do this or the industry wouldn't even do that. So basically judgment of expertise or the experts. So that is, uh, so. And that is exactly what we request right now. Exactly, yeah, that's. But uh, Richard, yeah. Just yeah, um, uh, yeah, 
exactly my chain of thought, what Helmut just mentioned, the case study would give us obviously the best results. I was wondering, do we have a handle on uncertainties of the different methods? Like, for example, if they're discussed in the, in the publications and um, maybe we can somehow um, evaluate the uncertainties um, for the for the numbers that you that you put here because other than that if we don't have a comparable study or yeah a case study then it seems difficult um, yeah that could be an approach uh, the problem is that the uncertainties vary much with the specific case uh, for application um, um, as well as mentioned earlier you know um, having homogeneous crystalline rocks and then working with fluent computation where you have no anisotropy perfectly works, you can fit those values quite well. And if you come to more complex, um, probably metamorphic rocks, um, then this approach really has limitations uh, um, because you cannot mm. reflect the inner structure, at least not in, in, in some cases. Um, yeah, you know, um, the important part here is uh, keep in mind that we have a three-folded approach here. So we are just discussing one element in one, one aspect. Um, just um, yeah. Yeah, um, keep in mind that we focus on uncertainty quantification, on method quality and on perturbation effects. So, and we're just talking about one aspect in the methodological quality. So, the, this is not a quantification we are doing here, but um, if we want to rate different dimensions and conductivity, then we need to uh, find some scoring values somehow. And uh, I always find it difficult to, to remind me that this is not, uh, in, in some way, this. This um, correlates, of course, to, uh, to an idea how uh, uncertainty is attached to each of those uh, uh, each of those methods here, right? Um, but it is not; it cannot be uncertainty. So it must be a more generalized rating about the general experiences with those with those methods. Yeah, yeah Imu. Um, <clears throat> I would use this sort of a numerical uh, weighting as a kind of a guide uh, to estimate the quality. That uh, uh, if, if we keep the uh, uh, the weighting values not too different from each other, it will give uh, uh, not too much weight on this uh, uh, this methodological uh, problems. And, and the second thing, and just an example, uh, just a few days ago, I, I looked at the heat flow database uh, uh, about heat flow in Europe. And uh, I, I learned that uh, about half of the entries have no depth information at all. So this is the, mostly the old data uh, uh, that, that was collected in the 50s and 60s, has a lot of uh, just uh, heat flow values but you would need to go to the original papers or whatever source to find the depth information. So uh, most of the data uh, would be thrown over the overboard by, by this sort of a classification. Uh, no. So it's, it's ranked up as low quality data, let's say. Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. It's not That's a way. It's a polite it's way still, to say it, yes. Yeah, it's... Yeah. And, I think this is important information for the user. Mm, yes. Okay, uh, let, let us come to the, the question uh, Sven asked, uh, and that's for Ilmo, please. Um, because here in the log interpretation and cutting measurements have different values, you suggested you like to have cutting more than logging or we put them both at a similar level, but lower than the first and second one. And then the number six would be lower than the fifth 
all the fifths before and maybe as uh, I just learned maybe not making the differences too much so that's a question for you Ilmo yeah something like that and, and anyway um, um, I would prefer always a measurement which measures conductivity more or less directly and uh, 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 indirect methods from various loggings can be uh, uh, quite uh, reliable if they're carefully done and the logs are inherently of good quality. But the more you have uh, uh, kind of a intermediate steps in determination of the heat flow value and, and different components are involved, the more complicated is the problem and more sources of error will be involved. Okay, so and then the, the, the cores are best, and then come yeah, okay. cuttings and and set. so so that's this kind of a mind view, but uh, but you can do very bad work with the cuttings as well. Yeah, so so the question would be: uh, Do we ex ex increase uh, cutting to zero point nine, or maybe lower lock interpretation to zero point eight? Mm -hmm. in Some order to that, set yeah. in order to satisfy you and at the at the last one maybe 0 0.7 the sixth one we add 0 0.7 and leave it then like that yeah maybe but that's that's my view so yeah because you raised that issue so that's why oh, i'm sure. asking yeah. again Other opinions on that? Friends, you can make it point zero five. What? Once more, please. Like, like, like uh, you are making one for the core and log, then core measurement can be point zero point nine five. So the difference should be not much in the at the end. It is now around twenty percent. So your suggestion is to to broaden it, or sorry, it's, it's it's my speaker here. It's it's not of the best quality. I did not get the full answer. Anyone else? What I what I mean to say the difference you are keeping point one for the, for different methods. So if you do that point zero five. Uh, you want to reduce every every measurement by 0 0.1, correct? Yeah. So 0, 1, 0, 8, 9, 0, 8, 0, 7, 0, 6, 0, 5? No, 0, 0 0.95, 0 0.9, 0 0.85. Ah, okay. Ah, okay. You, you want to have an extra uh, second digit. Because already we have second digit in others. Ah, uh, uh, okay. Ah, uh, okay. That's coming back to our. Okay. 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 Um, given the time, my suggestion would be what what I've taken from discussion. We add a six column here. Uh, with um, which comprises um, the solidity based and literature based values. Yeah. Uh, I think um, I got also that uh, we should have a, a small range um, to give the overall thing less weight here. So probably have steps of 0 0.05, so from 1 to over 0 0.95, 09, 085, and so on. Uh, I got the impression that um, it's important for Ilmo to rate cutting above the log interpretation. Mm -hmm. uh, we had no discussion at all on the saturation and price state here. Um, and I think uh, given the time, this is a topic we cannot open for the moment, um, but I would appreciate if everyone could comment on this um, when we circulate the drafts for the minutes 
as a sub comment to this discussion here. Um, I have a bit the feeling that um, I, I, I can set up the, this particular scheme here in an Excel file and circulate it around that one can play a bit around with the values. Uh, um, to have not everything like an image and, 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 this, um, um, and those slides here. Um, because we need to keep in mind that this rating, of course, needs to be uh, um, bring into connections with the rating for the temperature gradients we have to discuss for the next time. Um, I also got the impression that the differentiation for the interval here between temperature gradient and the lithology, probably we need to rethink, uh, probably to consider both on the same rating and just have a separation between gradient lithology on the one hand side and stratigraphy on the other hand side. Um, and my impression was that we generally have an agreement that we need to ask those questions, whether interval is reported uh, and used for calculation on the one hand side, and uh, that we then have uh, an evaluation scheme that based on the questions for the source, for the saturation and the in situ conditions. Um, and this is how I would write it in the minutes as well. Um, are there some, some fundamental remarks on the basic idea of this connectivity evaluation approach we have not discussed so far that needs to be raised uh, in this session? Which this do, do we need to worry about in situ measurement of thermal conductivity? I don't know. <laughs> um, it's, it's not very commonly done, but uh, some, some teams have done it. Um, in the marine realm, definitely. If or sure, yes. Uh, given the experiments we are doing right now, yes, but. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, this is a matter of question uh, or a matter of debate, right? Um, how 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 big this effect is and under which circumstances. Um, so basically, we know that uh, temperature really makes something, but for a shallow borehole, that doesn't count. Uh, uh, for deep boreholes, it apparently does play a role. Um, so um, yeah, that actually would be a. a matter of debate and discussion to, to exchange ideas here. So my personal feeling, having read most of those literature, uh, yeah, we clearly need to consider this. Um, I don't know whether the, the type of, of rating um, we have put or the numbers we have put or assigned to each of those levels is, is wisely shown. Probably we can find different values here and your comments and ideas are very welcome, but I don't think that we, sh we shouldn't ignore it uh, alone for the reason that uh, at a certain point we want to write guidelines. And uh, I always would prefer uh, values that are measured or that reflects temperature pressure conditions close to the target or the reservoir or the depth. Uh, I would prefer them compared to a simple um, uh, lab ambient measurements. Oh. And, and one thing also, as you mentioned much earlier, uh, it's something for the future. Uh, so it's, we are looking always back because the data we have, but actually in the future, I think it's more common to get more in situ data, especially like if geothermal is really coming more and more, maybe then definitely we will see much more data coming out. So for the future, I think the database should be more open for the future. So I'm pretty okay with that. And I, I obviously don't have uh, too much experience in the terrestrial or continental borehole style, but in the marine realm, um, we have two options. We measure, for example, on course, on deck, or we measure in situ. And um, there is quite a difference. So I was wondering, in the, in the thermal connectivity. And then 
when we measure on board, we always correct down to um, seafloor temperatures, um, the thermal conductivity. And I was wondering um, if how that effect would be in boreholes on the continental side. So maybe um, that, yeah, would be something to consider. So then give us the time and uh, uh, that some of you uh, have been up early and others quite late. Um, I would uh, suggest that uh, Ben and me will you write um, some minutes as usually. Uh, we will circulate this around this group and I kindly ask um, that you uh, add some, uh, some additional comments uh, on this specific issue of uh, putting numbers on, on those uh, categories. And um, then we, yeah, we will circulate a new doodle to make up a new workshop in April somehow, then uh, giving focus to the temperature gradients. And um, uh, yeah, with the information in mind that we have extended the deadline for Chamark 7 registration to those of you who are not registered now, let's go. <laughs> Need to see you face to face soon. And um, yeah, probably Ilmo, you can give some final words. Uh, just, just one, one question. Uh, in in, uh, in the previous meeting, we uh, shortly discussed uh, the need for for a quality uh, uh, m uh, discussion uh, on on marine heat flow, because there the pro uh, the process is quite different of measurements of the temperatures and, and and the measurements of the thermal conductivity. But but Ricardo just told. So then, and that would require, a, 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 it's a completely own approach of the quality assessment. We could do this in parallel. Yeah. Okay, then we just set up two doodles to make two appointments. Yeah. And then, yeah, you're right. We should start this in parallel. No reasons to wait for, for another month. Okay, then. It was great to see you all here together. Probably everyone who is here can activate the camera. I can make a nice picture for the minutes. Jeff, Xiangzo, Carlos, Dujan, probably you did not fall asleep so far. Huh? <laughs> so then three, two, one, smiling. Perfect. Thank you very much. <laughs> was great to have everyone here. Uh, hope to see as many as uh, of you as possible next month. And um, yeah, thanks for your contribution. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.